Hi again, everybody. Welcome on in. I'm Brad Sussmat. We're in South Mountain here. Spring training facilities all around us in Arizona. The great state, of course, with the Cactus League. Coming up on today's show, we're going to take you around South Mountain a little bit. John Smoltz, the Hall of Famer with Fox. We're gonna get in the weeds on spring training and some of the angles that he is looking forward to seeing take place here in Arizona. We'll talk with John Smoltz. Also on the show, Claudia Collins will take you out and on the rocks outside of here at South Mountain. Eliav Eats, of course, he knows where to take you to eat when you're done at spring training at the games, before and after the practices, we'll have Eliav Eats. And then the Rookie of the Year in the National League, Corbin Carroll. That's right, Corbin Carroll will be right here in your own backyard too when you're here for spring training. You'll learn more about him. That is all straight ahead on this week's episode. John Smoltz with us for a couple of minutes. Fox, Major League Baseball, lead analyst, Hall of Famer. Uh, nice enough to take some time to talk some spring training with us. In this offseason, what has caught your eye most, John? Well, this uh state the obvious, the Los Angeles Dodgers. I mean, it has been kind of, I think everybody anticipated that Shohei Otani was going to stay on the West Coast and probably go to the neighbors of the Dodgers. I don't know that people could have anticipated that kind of contract, uh, the details of it, uh, the uniqueness of it. And I think the big thing is um, they are not done. And they made the trades for a pitcher, signed Glass now, and then went out and signed a 12 year contract. So I said this, it's very intriguing, a lot of pressure on the Dodgers, but if you're a baseball player playing for the Dodgers, that's the way you want it. You want to have the pressure on you coming to spring training. And now it's about championships. You know, the Dodgers and the Yankees primarily have been about championships, right? From the history of their organization. So this is a kind of a big stamp towards trying to get that accomplished. You bring Yamamoto in as well, and there's a lot of conversation about is this good for the game of baseball, the Otani contract? What is that setting up towards? Can you address that a little bit? Yeah, it's unique. I think it's more to speak about the player and his willingness to do something. This is a copycat league. It always has been. Once somebody kind of embarks on a unique contract, then you see a lot of teams and a lot of players going after that. I don't know if this is going to be one of those. Uh, this is unique in every aspect. There is a 43 or 44 million dollar um you know hit to the Dodgers but this is all about now one of the the greatest generational players in the history of the game there's marketing all over it there's a business side to it all over it trust me Otani and his unique special talent and really his unique personality allowing this to happen did create creativity for the Dodgers to go and do exactly what we just said with the other two pitchers and the one thing I'm surprised about, honestly, is that for Otani to be the greatest player in the world, he, he needs to do both things. We know he can't do it this year, but how much will he be able to do it in the length of that contract, which will be very unique, because I don't think the Dodgers signed him to just be a DH or an outfielder. So that's what's going to be. I'm going to be very intrigued. I root for him. I wish that he stays healthy, but two Tommy Johns is two Tommy Johns. And that's that's the unknown factor in this in this contract. Take a step back on the Rangers because they train out here and the Diamondbacks, obviously, being here. The two World Series teams that you broadcast and you saw, what do you look at them from the lens coming into this season in spring training? I think it's a perfect example of why baseball can be played two different ways and have success in two different ways. The Diamondbacks are not going to have the payroll of the Dodgers. Matter of fact, they may not have the payroll of the entire length of the contract of Shohei Otani for whole for, for five, six years. Who knows? But Good what point. they figured out with the rules and the changes in baseball, they can put pressure on teams in a different way. And I think that uniqueness and taking advantage of that skill set is why they shocked everybody. I think it's a great story. Um, I think that teams are going to start copying that kind of narrative. Mm. They can't all copy the Dodgers and the Yankees. You just can't. And I think baseball is unique. That doesn't guarantee anything. But when you play the game right and you use the pieces that you have, the, both the Rangers and the Diamondbacks, in totally different ways, played the game and obviously ended up in the World Series. The Rangers relied on a heavy, quick strike, big-time offense, um, that did not steal bases, that did not create havoc on the, 
base pass. They created havoc at the plate with the long ball, whereas the, the Diamondbacks had a combination. And I think they're just starting to begin to understand what they can be, even though they have a monster in their division, even though the payroll is, is not even in the same atmosphere. I think they feel like they can compete with anybody if they play their game. Mm. And the Rangers coming back in, we'll see them out at Surprise Stadium in spring training. What do you make out of Bocha's squad? I think the Rangers are all about the health of their starting pitching. Now, they've already had a couple that just, uh, you know, are not going to be able to pitch this year. But they showed they showed the combination of leadership, true heart, and everybody pulling in the same direction. I think baseball, again, we want to we quantify everything. We want to put a stamp and an analytic on everything. And the Rangers showed why. If you have it in balance and you're not out of whack, that you can do something in the history of game that's never been done. There is no chance that you can tell me that a team's going to go 11-0 on the road again. It just doesn't seem like that's even possible. To go where they came, to, to, to do what they did from Seattle to Tampa, all the way and in the journey of their – that just speaks to what special sauce they had in their locker room. And I people ask me all the time, like, how do you explain it? I said – there's no analytic to explain it. It's a special sauce. It's something that only players know that when they step in that locker room, they believe in something that the outside world has no idea about. Now, whether they got mad and probably did from Seattle to Tampa, it spurned a focus, but their manager is a huge reason why this game is not as easy from the outside looking in that anybody can manage. Like anybody can take the information and run the gamut. That's not, and it's never been that case. And I think we saw the evidence of it this year. Before I get you out of here, and I appreciate your time, John Smoltz with us, the Hall of Famer, Fox lead baseball analyst. There's new bench bosses, just movement. Council goes over to the Cubs. Bowmel goes up to the Giants. The Padres, you know, the Angels. There's just new managers, Guardians, of course, uh, over in Goodyear where they train. Is there a team or two that you're interested in seeing how spring goes for them with the new managers, John? I think the Chicago Cubs are going to be an intriguing one because they've always been in the mix of, you know, when we had TBS, it was WGN and TBS, right? It was the Cubs and the Braves. And the Cubs have always had this incredible, unique, not only stadium that they've retrofit, their locker rooms. It's almost like they fit into what's going on right now. And they shocked a lot of people last year for a while, especially the way that made the run. But I didn't see that move coming. Uh, to be honest. So to have that interdivisional managerial move uh, to me is going to be very intriguing to see how that shapes the Chicago Cubs in a division that pretty much is winnable by anybody. Uh, you can make that, that, that claim. So that was an interesting and kind of surprising uh, move uh, that uh, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Appreciate your time. Let's get to the course off your frost delay. Thanks, John. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Good stuff there with John Smoltz. Love chopping it up with the Hall of Famer. All right, still to come, more from out here at South Mountain. We're presented by the Arizona Office of Tourism, and this is one of those great destinations when you come here for spring training. South Mountain, you're going to want to hike. Later in the show, Claudia Collins will show you another spot where you want to get out and about when you're away from the spring training game. We'll bring that to you. And then Eliav eats E out, giving you a spot to sit and chop it up over some food when you're done at your spring training venue. That's all straight ahead as we roll on from Arizona. Discover more play for all at Harris Auk Chin Casino. Hi, folks. What are your dreams? Where having fun means racking up reward credits with the Caesars Rewards Loyalty Program. They can be redeemed for food, free play, <laughs> hotel stays, and more. Not only here in the city of Maricopa, but also at more than 50 Caesars properties coast to coast. From Harris, Las Vegas, the Caesars Palace in Atlantic City. What are you waiting for? Play for all at Harris Auk Chin Casino, the official sponsor of play.
Let's talk about Venezia's Pizzeria. New York style pizza. Oh man, this looks so good. Pizza doughs made fresh daily, wings, subs, sandwiches, pasta. They cater, they deliver. They have five alley locations. Venezia's New York style pizzeria. Bienvenidos. Here in the heart of the American Southwest, you'll find three well-known restaurants all named Valle Luna, serving the finest Sonoran-style Mexican food known across the country and beyond, and we're open for business. So come on in. We've fired up the grill and iced down the refreshments and even added some specialties along the way. Thanks for coming. Hello. Greetings. Welcome back. No matter where you're from or how you say it, at Valle Luna, you're always welcome, and we're glad to have you back. I got things on my mind like getting away Somewhere the sun shines so I can sit in the rays I see my problems dissolve, the ones I couldn't erase Next flight out to Mesa, had to book it in case I felt that there's a time that you was feeling down That you should take a trip to our so town we yeah. Welcome to the latest edition of Eats with Eliab. We're here in Scottsdale at Valley Wings. So if you're coming to visit the Giants, this is the wing spot for you. I'm here with co-owner Kiara Adams. Kiara, thank you for hosting us. The writing is literally on the wall here at Valley Wings. What was the inspiration behind that? We had a customer come into our first location in North Phoenix on 19th Avenue and Greenway. She was from London and she asked if she could write on the wall and of course we can't say no to our customers. So the first signature that blew us up was DeAndre Hopkins. Of course, uh, he posted about us and we went viral. The list goes on and on. Charles Barkley is one of our favorite regulars. That should tell you all you need to know, first of all, about the quality of wings here. But how did everything get started here at Valley Wings? So my husband, he's a wing lover. We're from Michigan originally, um, and we could never find any good wings out here. So he told me about, I would say nine years ago, that he wanted to open up a wing spot, and here we are. I think it's only right that we start with our house sauce, our valley sauce. It's going to be a sweet barbecue sauce. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. I have to ask you something. Yeah. Are you a drum or a flat type of person? Wow, that is a great question. And I've gone back and forth for years <laughs> now, to be honest with you. I've been a drum guy for a long time. OK. But I got to credit one of my buddies from home. I'm starting to become a bit of a flats guy. Oh, don't let them make you cross over. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> so you're a drum gal. I am. Okay. I am. <laughs> Should we toast to that? Yes, cheers. Cheers. The valley sauce. Yes. Kiara, where are we going next? We're gonna go to the honey hot. Oh, which the honey is hot, okay. One of my favorites. Because I like spice, so it gives you that little kick. So it's the perfect balance between sweet and spicy. But it's not overwhelming. Lemon pepper is a hot seller here. Mm -hmm. For good reason, by the way. The lemon comes through and the crunchiness in every bite. So this is going to be our Don special sauce. Um, we like to call it a secret menu item, but the secret is getting out. <laughs> <laughs> the secret is definitely getting out. I try to describe it to the customers all the time. And I'm like, wait, let me just bring you a wing out to try. <laughs> The Valley Gold is one of our big sellers. Um, it's a honey mustard sauce. And sometimes when you say honey mustard, people look at you like, mm, I don't know about that. 
but once you give it a try, you'll never go back. If you had to choose, what are your rankings? If I had to choose the Valley Sauce first, and then I'm going to go with the Honey Hot, and then the Valley Gold, the Don Special, okay. and then the Lemon Pepper. I think I'm gonna start at the Valley Sauce. I love the traditional Lemon Pepper, Valley Gold, and then we got the Sweet and Spicy, and then I'll go with the Don. So if you're in Phoenix, Apache Junction, or Scottsdale, come over to Valley Wings, have yourself a bite, and maybe even sign the wall. <laughs> For Kiera, I'm Eliav Goodbye. This has been Eats with Eliav. You gotta bring your golf clubs when you come out of here for spring training. This is Whirlwind Golf Club. Two courses, Devil's Claw and Cattail. Masterpieces developed by Gary Panks, covering 500 acres, 250 acres of turfed area, 250 acres of desert landscape. I've played this many times. Truly unique here in the Southwest, the golf experience that you'd like. From there, when you're at spring training, you'll see the Rookie of the Year in the National League over at the Diamondbacks, and that is Corbin Carroll. He was out working with some kids. Woo! Nice. Heads up. Boom. Yeah, dude. What's up, dude? Nice, dude. You look like you pay taxes. Uh-oh. Coming in hot. Ooh. Dang. Yeah, look at that. That's it right there. Rookie. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> camp is really exciting because it's an introduction to baseball for kids who are playing for the very first time. Just try stepping with that one when you throw. This program is uh, reviving baseball in inner cities. Yeah, right there. And, and having Corbin out here and our d backs Baseball Academy staff, um, it's, it's, it's crucial um, to provide the instruction for the kids. All right, we're going to make a circle and then we're just going to throw some balls and we're going to have some fun. Yay! It means a lot. It means a lot for the kids to see somebody who is special to the organization and somebody who is special to Arizona itself so the kids really really got a gem today you like hitting yeah, yeah that's my favorite too it's really just about getting out here um, you know playing with them um, being supportive and encouraging and just trying to create um, you know love the game nice Corbin Carroll is uh, very special we're very blessed with this d -backs team they love giving back oh man Oh, big swing. We want one more? But this is Corbin's favorite. He wants to make sure that we grow the game, that kids fall in love with baseball. What position do you play? Shooting guard? No, oh, you can shoot it a little bit? Okay. No, I can't. I just, I think it's so important um, to, to get out here and especially stuff with the kids, like love of the game, stuff I talked about earlier, like this is, this is what I'm all about. Like switch your hands? There, try that one. Swing as hard as you can. And anytime we mention RBI, he wants to be involved. You know, it's an under-resourced, underprivileged program where these kids do need opportunity and exposure to get to that next level. Nice. There we go. Corbin is so generous with his time, but he's also really passionate about kids, growing the game, providing baseball gloves, making sure they fall in love with the game and keep playing. Were you sad when you lost the World Series? Was I sad? A little bit. Yeah. Still to come, we'll take you back out on the rocks. From here, Claudia Collins will show you a different destination for your hiking and outdoor adventures from here at Spring Training as we roll on from Arizona. Here in the heart of the American Southwest, you'll find three well-known restaurants all named Valle Luna, serving the finest Sonoran-style Mexican food known across the country and beyond, and we're open for business. So come on in. We've fired up the grill and iced down the refreshments and even added some specialties along the way. Thanks for coming. Hello. Greetings. Welcome back. No matter where you're from or how you say it, at Valle Luna, you're always welcome, and we're glad to have you back. Visit us at Harris Ock Chin Casino in the city of Maricopa, where you'll find play for all and friendly people ready to welcome you like family. 
Welcome back, you two. As the official sponsor of play and the only casino in Arizona with Caesars Rewards, see what a difference it makes to play where your fun is our top priority. Harris Ok Chin Casino. Play for all. Let's talk about Venezia's Pizzeria. New York style pizza. Oh man, this looks so good. Pizza doughs made fresh daily, wings, subs, sandwiches, pasta. They cater, they deliver. They have five valley locations. Venezia's New York style pizzeria. What's up everyone, welcome to On The Rocks. I'm your trail guide, Claudia Collins, and I'm taking you along for my adventures as I check hikes, waterfalls, and other outdoor activities off of my Arizona bucket list. Today we're going to the Tonto Natural Bridge State Park in Pine, Arizona. The hike to the Natural Bridge is 1.4 miles long with 291 feet of elevation gain, and it's rated difficult. The Tonto Natural Bridge has been on my bucket list for so long, and today just felt like the perfect day to do it getting a little bit hot in Phoenix and I just wanted to get away. So what better time to come and explore this out in Payson, Arizona. The park rangers advise that we take the Gowan Trail counterclockwise for the best overall experience. Combined with the other trails, I expected this would be an easy little trek. I love coming up to the Payson area during the summer because it's the ideal escape and it's just so green and lush out here. The natural bridge has been on my bucket list since moving back to Arizona. I can already hear the water. However, it's not pet friendly, so we had to leave Mia behind today, but I'm sure she'll understand. The decline down gave me a glimpse of how steep this trail may actually feel at times, but the views were already immaculate. As we descended, I started to hear the water close by, and I was already able to see the natural bridge from the distance. This first part of the trail is so serene and doesn't feel like we're only an hour and a half away from the hustle and bustle of downtown Phoenix. As we approach the natural bridge, we also approach a not so natural bridge. Before climbing up the steps, I decided to enjoy the shade and cool creek down below. Now we head up the steps to get a closer look at the bridge and make our way under it. But first it's time for some really fun facts. The Tonto Natural Bridge is the largest known travertine bridge in the world. Depending on the time of year, you may catch the beautiful light waterfall too. The natural bridge sits at 183 feet high over a 400 foot long tunnel, meaning there is a lot of space for some fun exploration down below, which is exactly what we came here for. I was stunned when I first laid eyes on the natural bridge and made my way into the tunnel. No picture or video I'd seen of the bridge had ever done it justice. When I first thought about doing this hike, I was thinking, how can a 1.5 mile hike be rated hard? But honestly, it's pretty steep and pretty slippery. But there's some awesome places to swim on the south side. Really like the bridge overlooking the natural bridge. And the natural bridge offers some amazing shade. You can feel the water spraying on you and cooling you down. And I think I'm just going to sit here and enjoy it for a little bit. One of the things I didn't anticipate at all was feeling like I was in a light rain shower. Throughout the tunnel, you could feel the misty drops of water falling from the bridge. All of this was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. And I've hiked a lot, so that's really saying something. As you climb through the tunnel, there's various pools of water with some really beautiful and shiny rocks that are also very slippery, so take your time as you climb around. And follow the arrows to make sure you're not accidentally entering any restricted areas. 
And see what I mean? I'm in a tunnel and it's raining. The sound of rushing water was very calming, and I found myself wanting to sit around in different spots instead of quickly hiking through. The park was very busy this Saturday morning, but I found that everyone was very respectful. So as a reminder, make sure to leave no trace on every hike you do. Although some areas below the bridge have deep pools of water, visitors are not permitted to do any swimming under the bridge, as tempting as it may look, but the water is really cold anyways. The final stretch leaving the tunnel was very slick and steep. I was taking my sweet, sweet time being as careful as possible. But once I made it out of the bridge, I knew there was still a little bit more climbing to do. My final thoughts on this hike as we approach the end, it's worth every cent. And by that I mean the seven bucks per person it costs to get into the park. I think I could have spent all day here, but I had empanadas from Pie Bar down the street in Strawberry on my mind. The final incline had me earning those empanadas too. And here we are at the end of the trail. This was more of a workout than I thought it would be, but it's definitely worth coming out to this area, buying a day pass, and coming out and enjoying the Tonto Natural Bridge. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time on The Rocks. As you can see, so much to take in here at spring training. Yep, you're going to come on out and visit your favorite team. That's awesome and amazing, but we want you to see what Arizona is all about. And that's our show for this week. Thanks again for being with us. For all of us, make it a great and safe week from Arizona. Bienvenidos. Here in the heart of the American Southwest, you'll find three well-known restaurants all named Valle Luna, serving the finest Sonoran-style Mexican food known across the country and beyond. And we're open for business, so come on in. We've fired up the grill and iced down the refreshments and even added some specialties along the way. Thanks for coming. Hello, greetings. Welcome back. No matter where you're from or how you say it, at Valle Luna, you're always welcome. And we're glad to have you back. Let's talk about Venezia's Pizzeria, New York style pizza. Oh man, this looks so good. Pizza doughs made fresh daily, wings, subs, sandwiches, pasta. They cater, they deliver. They have five alley locations. Venezia's New York style pizzeria. Discover more play for all at Harrah's Ock Chin Casino. Hi, folks. What are your dreams? Where having fun means racking up reward credits with the Caesars Rewards Loyalty Program. They can be redeemed for food, free play, <laughs> hotel stays, and more. Not only here in the city of Maricopa, but also at more than 50 Caesars properties coast to coast. From Harrah's Las Vegas to Caesars Palace in Atlantic City. What are you waiting for? Play for all at Harrah's Ock Chin Casino, the official sponsor of play.